What's going on, everybody? My name is Ben, and welcome back to the bench for another episode of our Ben Builds with Joe video series and our Tamiya D520 in 148 scale. So this is actually going to be a little bit of a shorter episode today. I just am planning on doing a couple of quick scratch building details, and then I want to do a little bit of weathering, and that's about it. Last time, I overcoated everything with the Tamiya buff to act as a little bit of a primer, and that looks okay. I think it's a little bit too clean right now. We have to dirty it up just a little bit, and I also used Gunzy like a midnight blue or very close to insignia blue for the actual cockpit floor and the sidewalls. I think that looks pretty good. Now on the cockpit floor itself, it looks okay. I did a little bit of dry brushing with a pale blue over all of the blue sections and really kind of helped to pop some of that detail. So I'm pleased with that. We have our little makeshift lever there on the side of the seat, so it's looking pretty decent. We also did a little bit of work on the seat. A couple episodes ago, we actually drilled out the corners and then the center section right there on the seat itself. We need to come back today and go ahead and start painting on some of the colors. For example, the back part would be like a canvas color, and then the seat cushion, I'm going to go ahead and do in a red-brown because that's the references that I've seen, so we're going to go with that. And last episode, I did end up going ahead and building up some makeshift flooring right below the cockpit so that when you look down through it, you can see a little bit of detail. I think that looks okay. We're going to go ahead and weather it down, dirty it up just a little bit, and I think that's a good place to start. One of the things I do want to go ahead and touch on today is scratch building for our gun sight. Now, the gun sight that comes with the kit is a very plain, just a square chunk, and I don't really like how it looks. I would actually much prefer to go ahead and try my luck at some scratch building and see if I can't make something that looks a little bit closer to what it looks like in real life. Also, I had promised on my stashed update video to go ahead and give you guys a closer look at my decal set that I picked up for for this particular kit. This is the Aeromasters decal for the D520. This is actually part two, and let's go ahead and open it up here, and I'll show you what the decals look like, what the different schemes will look like. So let's go ahead and check it out. Right off the bat, I can already tell that these decals are much better in terms of color. I like how these look. And let's go ahead and open up the different schemes here, and we can see which ones we like. Here we are. So we're given three different versions. We have a Battle of France 1940 version, which is a very typical three-color French camo. Then we have a couple that served, I believe, in North Africa. So we have a yellow cowling and a yellow tail. And down here we have a pure yellow nose and also another yellow tail. So these are kind of interesting looking schemes, to be honest. But of course, the real tough question is now, which version am I going to go ahead and paint? I'm really digging this red striped yellow tail. I think that's actually very cool looking. You know, I'm kind of leaning towards the center one though. I think that would be interesting and challenging. And I think it might look kind of neat in my display case. Now, as you go ahead and flip this over, we are met with a top-down view here of the D520. As you can see, we have a couple of stripes on the wings, and then we have our red stripes on the tail. So that's actually very, very helpful. I might just go ahead and go with that middle one. Looks pretty nice, but we'll see what we do. Now, I also wanted to go ahead and give you guys a close-up look at the decals and compare them side by side with what comes in the box. So let's go ahead and zoom in real quick. And as you can see, the Tamiya decals and the Aeromaster decals, the coloring is very different. Now, as you can notice, the red color here on the Tamiya looks almost like a brick red, almost more maroon. That's what I was originally referring to when I first looked at these. I thought something doesn't look quite right. The red looked too dark. And I think that even though these schemes are very, very cool, I'm going to go ahead and go with the ones here because I just like the red color. It looks more authentic. It looks closer to what I know. And it also gives you the red for the yellow tail, which is nice. I'm not sure if I would go ahead and paint those or if I would use the decals. It kind of depends on what I do for the rondels. If I go ahead and I paint on the rondels, I would probably paint on the stripes as well, just so that the red all matches. And they give you a lot of different rondels here, though. So I have actually extras. But overall, I think these are really nice looking decals. It's a beautifully printed set. Carrier film looks very manageable. Coloring seems closer to my references. But now let's go ahead and shift over to our very first time lapse. And I want to go ahead and start by using some Army Painter washes. Now I used these on the ATST and they actually worked really, really well. It just adds a little bit of subtle shading to the different paints. So we are going to use three different versions. I'm going to be using a blue wash for the blue sections there on the cockpit, be using a dark tone just so that we can add a little bit of grunge, and then we'll use a soft tone to tint this buff color to make it look a little dirtier. I think that's going to be a good move to make. So let's go ahead and jump into our first time lapse. Let's use our Army Painter washes and just kind of play around with it and get this rolling. Let's do it, guys. See how it goes.
right, everybody, we are back. And I got to tell you, those RB Painter washes actually worked really, really well. So I'm pleased with the overall look. At least it's a good starting point, to be honest. We have a lot more weathering we can do, but I think that's a really good place to start. We're going to go ahead and move over now to our gun site. And I had mentioned earlier that I wanted to go ahead and try to scratch build a gun site that resembles the actual French gun site that they used here in the D520. The French used a very unusual looking gun sight. It almost looks like a lantern, to be honest, like an old school lantern. And so what we want to go ahead and do is replace the kit version with something scratch built. You know me in scratch building. Now I did a quick measurement off camera and everything on the gun sight is about five millimeters in every direction. So we're going to go ahead and take a strip of styrene and we're going to cut a couple of pieces off of it that are going to measure about five millimeters. Then we're going to start building layers to make a base. We're going to go ahead and stretch some sprue to go ahead and make the corner supports. Then we're going to take another piece and we're going to drop a piece out on top of those center supports, creating something that looks kind of like a lantern. And then I'm going to go ahead and also take one of my punches. We're going to punch out a couple of circles, add a bit more detail. Let's go ahead and jump into our second time lapse. Fingers crossed, we can get something to look pretty cool and a lot more like the actual gun sight. Let's go ahead and do it, guys. All right, everybody, we are back. And I got to say, that was actually a lot of fun to build that gun sight. Just going ahead and being able to create something out of just little pieces of plastic. I like that. I like the whole scratch building thing. So I think it turned out much better than what was actually initially in the box. Now, of course, we also went ahead and painted up the chair. I used a red brown for the seat cushion. I think that's good enough. And we used kind of a light khaki kind of desert sandy color for the canvas in the back of the seat. It may not be 100% correct, but We'll go ahead and come back and maybe do a little bit of dry brushing over top of that just to go ahead and give it a little bit more character. And then I think once we go ahead and seal it, we can wash it down with maybe one of our army painter washes and we'll just see what happens. So we are getting close, guys. We're almost ready to go ahead and get this fuselage all buttoned up. In terms of the army painter washes for the inside of the fuselage, I like how this has turned out. I think using a little bit of the dark tone followed by soft tone really kind of helped to kind of dirty things down. You're not really going to see much of it, to be honest, because it's going to be closed up and it's dark in that fuselage. But either way, I think it looks pretty cool and it's a great base to work from. For the cockpit floor, I think that looks fine. Last episode, we did a quick dry brushing of pale blue. 
That helped to pop all the rivet details, and I think it looks great. I'm happy with it. And of course, I went ahead and worked on the gun sight, and I scratch built that lantern style optics that we see in different reference photos. Going to give you a close up here, you can see some of the detail. I think it turned out all right. And to be honest, I like how it looks. You know, it may not be perfect, it may not be perfectly square. Some of the support legs might be a little bit off, not exactly perpendicular with the rest of them, but I think it looks much better for the cockpit having a bit of 3D detail. I think this is actually a very nice improvement. So I'm happy with it. We do need some paint though, tackle that next episode, but I think this is a really good place to go ahead and start for that gun sight. We've got everything nicely washed. We have our gun sight scratch built. Next episode, we'll come on back and we're gonna work a little bit more on the cockpit tub, getting that back section right behind the windows all nicely glued in, and then working on the front instrument panel. So until then, you know the drill. Go out there, get yourself some bench time, have some fun, build something cool. Make sure to drop on by Joe's channel, check out his D520, it's looking sweet. And we'll see you back here on episode number five. Thanks so much, everybody. We'll see you soon.